everybody and welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. So I decided to split my book haul into uh, two parts and I'm doing this because um, I think I have like 27 books to haul this month. So I figured what I would start with is books that I had left over from May, books that I got sent for review, my book of the month books, and my Target book haul books because Target is currently having Actually, I don't know if the, by the time this goes up, I don't know if it'll still be happening. But there was a buy to get one free sale, which I had to take advantage of. So I figured I would do that. And then in my other haul, I would do my random purchases and my pre-orders. They're probably both still going to be big, but it is what it is. So let's start with my book of the month books. I got three this month because I can never help myself. Um, so the first book I got was The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark, which I am super excited about. Um, I loved The Last Flight by her. And finally, I still have another book on my shelf that I still need to read by her. Um, but I love The Last Flight, so like the fact that there's another one. And it's been getting really good buys. I don't even know what it's about because it's thriller. It says she's back. Apparently, there's a person with lots of different names. I think it's a con artist type of job. I don't know. Like I said, I don't really want to know anything because I went into the last flight not really knowing anything, and I loved it. So I think that that's what I'm going to do with this one. So I'm excited for this one. Another one that I know nothing about um, is The Hotel Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand. It is not summer for me without an Ellen Hildebrand book. And it's killing me because she, I know she keeps talking about she's going to retire within the next few years. And I'm like, please don't. Um, because I don't know what I'll do. Um, if you're new to following me, I have read every published full length novel by Ellen. So like, I haven't read like, I'm thinking, I read The Sixth Wedding and I haven't read something about baseball. I can't remember what that one was. But like, I haven't read her like short stories. But I've read all of her full-length novels. Um, so I don't know what I will do when I don't have any books by her. Um, I don't know much about this one. I think I've heard that there's a ghost involved. That's all I know. In a hotel. So I'm hoping that it'll be fantastic. Um, I've been kind of waiting until, like, true summer to read it. So hopefully that will be soon. Then I also grabbed The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. Now this one like was kind of a completely out of left field choice because when I first saw it, I went, no, it is a looks high fantasy. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I don't do fantasy books. But it kind of had a play on Aladdin. And I read the first like chapter or so on um, Goodreads. It was The preview was available because this book I think actually came out in May. Um... And I actually really enjoyed the chapter preview. So I was like, I think I might need to get it. The only downside that I'm like upset about is because of the fact that this is the first book in a series and book of the month kind of stinks when it comes to series. Like sometimes it'll continue the series and sometimes it won't. Um, so I don't know why I chose to be brave with this one, but it just, oh, well, it does say the Sand Sea Trilogy book one. So maybe they will continue the rest of them. That would be fantastic. So hopefully that is the case with that one. Um, book left over from May was The Cherry Robbers by Sarai Walker. This is the book that I got when I went book shopping with my kids. It was like a rainy day and I was like, let's go to Barnes and Noble. And they got a ton of books and I only walked out with one. I was very proud of myself. Um, the reason I wanted this one is because it reminds me so much of home. I don't know if she lives in Connecticut. Does she live in Connecticut? It doesn't say where she lives. But. Yeah, it doesn't say where she lives. But the book obviously has a um, rifle on it. And it talks about 1950s Connecticut. And it talked about the gu like guns. The synopsis doesn't look like the synopsis that I originally read. But we have the cult building in Connecticut. So I thought that this would be kind of like, I don't know. Whenever books mention Connecticut, I'm always sold. That's usually my go-to. But I think it's also dual timelines with historical fiction, which, guys, you know, that's like my buzz lately is like dual timeline perspectives. Like, give it to me. So... 
We'll see. It looks really, looks intense, but hopefully I'll like it. Um, I got some books for review. Two of them I got at the end of May. Um, the first one is Yes Daddy by Jonathan Parks Ramage. Now, this one I started to read, and I have a feeling it's not going to actually be for me. This was gifted to me um, by Biblio Lifestyle, and um, I think it's because the paperback was getting released because the hardcover I knew was already out. And it's about this guy who's living in New York City, and he really wants to be, like, a playwright. And so he basically sets his sights on a playwright that he can kind of get in a relationship with. And it's a very dark relationship. And the little bit that I've read so far was kind of intense, and I just wasn't in the mood for it at that time. So I probably might re-pick it back up, but at the time, it just it wasn't what I needed, so I put it down. The other book that I got was Corrections and in Ink by Carrie Blackinger. This is on sale as of June 7th, so it's actually out now. Um, this is a memoir about somebody who was a competitive figure skating, and then her career fell apart, and then she got really into, like, drugs, and, like, her life just kind of took a complete turn, and then she gets arrested, and kind of her life, like I said, her life kind of flips upside down, and then she is able to basically be gifted a second chance when she gets out of jail. So I'm really intrigued by this one. I think that it'll be a really interesting story, and hopefully I can get to review this for you guys sooner rather than later, because I thought... I didn't realize how, like, not enough time I had with that one. Um, and then these two I got this month. Um, I got this one, The Kingdoms of Savannah by George Dawes Green. This one comes out in July, so I've got some time. I think it comes out, like, at the end of July. And this one is taking place in Savannah, Georgia. Um, it says, Savannah may appear to be some town out of a fable, with its fine flowers, turreted mansions, and ghost tours that romanticize the city's history. But look deeper, and you'll uncover secrets, past and present, that tell a more sinister tale. Hello! That sounds fantastic! And, like, look at this cover. Beautiful. And then I also received for review after hours of on Milagro Street by Angela M. Lopez. This one comes out July 12th, so very soon. Um, all I saw was that they own, somebody works at someone's bar, I believe. So it says, Professor Jeremiah Post, the poor handsome man, is in fact standing in the way of Alejandra Torres's turning Loretta's, her grandmother's bar, into a viable business. So I think that she wants to obviously have a restaurant, and I think this guy comes in and could potentially, like, blow it all down. I don't know. I will tell you more later, because I definitely want to read this before this month is over and before it comes out. So hopefully this will be in my second part of June wrap-up. Then, um, like I said, uh, Target was uh, having a buy three, get three free, buy, buy three, get three free sale. That's not what it was called. Buy two, get one free sale. So I bought three hardcovers and three paperbacks. That's how I tend to run the sale. So some months, I sometimes they run the sale and I end up getting done. But I, what I really try to do is I try to do like three paperbacks. So that way one of the paperbacks is free. And then I try to do three hardcovers. So one of the hardcovers is free. I don't know if that's actually how it ends up working out, but in my brain, that's how it works, right? So let's start with the hardcovers. We got Two Nights in Lisbon by Chris Pavone. And I believe this is about a husband and wife who end up vacationing in Lisbon. I don't think she really wanted to go. I think he, like, convinced her to go, and then he ends up vanishing, or, like, he's, like, dead or something. Yeah, it says, Ariel Price wakes up in Lisbon alone, and her husband is gone. No warning, no note, not answering his phone, and something is wrong. It kind of reminded me of, um, Maude Dixon. Um, so I thought that this would be fun or like the flight attendant. Um, so it just sounded like it could be like a really interesting book and I've never read a book that takes place in Lisbon. So I thought that that would be extremely fun. Right. I was not expecting it to be this chunky though. <laughs> Then I grabbed um, The Island by Adrienne McKinty. Um, I read 
the um, chain by him. And I would, I really enjoyed the beginning part of the book. The end, it took like this like dramatic, like it did, it needed to end when it ended, but it didn't. Um, so I'm interested to give him a second chance. This is about a family who ends up like on an island. Like they go on vacation and they end up on this island and then it turns into something like sinister and they need to like escape the island. And it just, again, sounds like a perfect like summer read. Like, don't you want to go to an island in the summer? Just, you don't want to have to escape it with your family. <gasps> That's interesting. So in the top, we've got dad, mom, and the two kids, but we just have the two kids. I think if I remember correctly, actually, I think she's, like, stepmom. And then, like, she's now in charge of trying to, like, get the kids off. I think that might actually be what happened. It sounds so good. It sounds so good. The thing I hate about Halls is it gets me so excited for all the books. And then I'm like, but you have a thousand other books you need to get to as well. Um, I end up grabbing These Impossible Things by Salma L. Ward Wardenay. Now this is the uh, read with Jenna's newest book and um, it says love, sex, and faith. Three best friends existing in a perfect moment until one night changes it all. So I started reading a chapter preview of this one and it was about like the three best friends and they were like chit-chatting all together and like one of the girls meets a guy online. And that's all I know and that's all I care to know. But I'm assuming that there must be something that more sinister. So I think it sounds like they all take different paths after that. And they eventually have to come back together. Ooh, did, she's half Egyptian, half Irish. That's cool. Those are two very fun cultures. So I'm really excited to see how her cultures play out in this book. That sounds so fun. Um, I knew nothing about this book until I ordered it. This is called The Impossible Us by Sarah Lotz. So I originally had a different book in my cart, and then somebody was like, look what I'm buying in the sale when I saw this. And, like, I saw the little snippet that they put next to it, and I was like, magical realism. I need that. So apparently, like, they, like, send each other emails by accident, and they start, like, having this true connection, and then they go to meet up, and each other is not there. And they find out that they are in different dimensions. You know me lately, like I said, magical realism, like the second is kind of got a buzz for me. All of a sudden, like I like need to have it now. Like it's definitely a genre that I'm really trying to try out this year. And I'm excited. Um, I bought um, Black Girls Must Be Magic by Jane Allen. This is the sequel to Black Girls Must Die Exhausted. I was not expecting it to be so tiny, especially because I know a third book is coming so I was not expecting this one to be so short, which I'm kind of fine with, though, because I do like my short books. But, like, these covers, man, her cover designer, ugh, on point. These are gorgeous. So when we meet our her in the first book, Tabitha is, she's kind of got it all. She's got the boyfriend. She's got the job that's supposed to be getting her promotion soon. She's supposed to have it all. And then something happens to her. She gets a diagnosis that kind of flips her life completely upside down. Um, so it's really kind of like a slice of life kind of story. And I'm excited to see what happens, especially the way it ended in the second, in the first book. I'm really excited to see where Tabitha goes in this one. And then the last book that I got for this part of our haul, I've got The Wild Girls by Phoebe Morgan. This is one that I feel like there's a hair on my face. I'm sorry if I keep like grabbing my face. Um, this is a thriller novel and this is one that has like come on and off my like radar of like, I'm going to buy it. No, I'm not. I'm going to buy it. No, I'm not. So I figured if I could get it for free, I'm going to do it. And it's four friends that go on a luxury retreat. I believe they go to Africa and then sinister things happen. Yeah. It says a deliciously wicked and stunning thriller about a group of old friends who plan to reconnect on an African safari vacation, but soon learn that their wild past have finally caught up with them. It just sounds fun. So yeah, those are all the books that I got for this first half of the month, even though that's not true. I, like, I'm literally staring at my other half of this book haul right now. So I think I'm just waiting on like two more books and then I can film that one. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know. Have you read any of these or any of these on your radar? Let me know and I will see you guys really soon. Bye everybody.